Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we got out perhaps my biggest Star Wars item, at least that I can think of, and that is the original um, Imperial Shuttle. I mean, Blimenek, what an iconic, iconic piece. Now, I've had this one since uh, the early 90s, and to be honest, it's not in the greatest of shape. Um, the actual ship itself is okay, but the box certainly um, uh, needs a bit of a clean. So I'm not gonna go crazy on this, but it does indeed need um, a bit of tidying up um, and um, uh, yeah, basically a bit of a tart up and a clean just to get it looking as good as I possibly can because it's such a great, great piece and I absolutely love it. So I thought what better chance than to, uh, to dig this one out and we'll have a really close look at the actual ship as well. So that will be the subject of today's video. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay, so I've pulled the camera right out here just so that we can get this beast of a playset actually uh, in, in video. So um, I really don't wanna do a lot of work on this, but certainly there are parts of this that do need um, tidying up just so that I can at least store it safely and securely um, and in the knowledge that it's not gonna get any worse. So if we look at it, on the main picture there, it's actually looking pretty good. There's a little bit of sticker wear that, but um, I mean, I could put a little bit of Pritt stick on that and I'll glue that bit down. Um, where you start to see like signs is sort of that, um, that split there in the box. And I am very much considering whether it's worth putting some sort of tape inside just to straighten it out a little bit, potentially. Um, if you look on this side here, so you can see the original sort of tape down the bottom here has come off or is it's so old and yellow that it's come off. You can see on the top here, this yellow line here, it was there to begin with and it's just sort of fallen to bits. Along the very top, you can see this had tape which has gone and you can see this is really dusty and it needs, look at the dust there, and that needs a really good wiping off. This side isn't too bad, I mean, that, the artwork side. There's a couple of these, it's almost like bullet holes where something has ended up, there's another one there, something has ended up pushing into the side of the box. And once again, I don't think I can do a lot about that. This side is a bit of a shame. So this would have been the other side of where the tape was. It's been pulled off and sadly, it's caused the side of the box to get ripped. A bit of tape down the bottom there but certainly not the end of the world, and it's still a really, really nice piece. Um, the main concern, box-wise, as well as the, the dust on the top, is the bottom here. So as you can see, this yellowing tape has just about had it. So what I'm thinking of doing is re-taping on the inside of the box. I'll put a brand new layer of tape inside there, and potentially I might yeah, I'm probably gonna pull that off, to be honest, all right? And obviously clean the top of it. So that is what's gonna to happen to the box. And now I'll get the ship out and we'll have a look at that. So while we're here, I thought it'd be a good thing to do is have a look at the, uh, the flaps of the box. You can see sort of how dusty and dirty it is. And towards the bottom there, you can sort of see where the tape has gone. The bottom is not secure anymore because that tape has just sort of died to death. So <laughs> that is why I think I'm gonna to need to sort of re-tape re that one. So anyway, let's have a look at the ship now. So here's the ship itself. Now it's all in, in pieces. So um, it has had stickers applied. There's the sort of the, the dome, the cockpit area there. There's the, uh, the fin that goes in, in the top. And you'll see that it's not bad, but it has got like a little bit of yellowing and aging and nothing that won't um, I, you know, technically I could wash it, but I'm thinking I might just pop the old polish on and just give it a bit of a polish. Um, thankfully it has still got its uh, instructions. This is the uh, European version, so not the Kenner. So we can see how to, how to put it together. So even he's smiling, <laughs> which is quite cool. And uh, the actual ship itself, well, it's, it, it really is okay to be honest. Um, it's just sort of little touches of uh, sort of yellowing and aging here and there, which 
you know, it'll be absolutely fine once I've um, sort of run the old uh, duster over it. So as I said, I'm not going to do a major restoration or anything on this because it just doesn't need it. The box, however, really does need a bit of a clean up. And then I can certainly, um, until I can get it on display, I'm going to get it as good as possible and just put it into a bin liner and that will at least keep all the dust and stuff off it until such time as I can put it into uh, something really special. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get on and uh, start the cleanup. So initially all I'm going to do is take all the little little pieces and uh, run my toothbrush over it and this will just lift off any uh, any bits of dust and dirt that's gone into sort of any of the, the crevices which the Star Wars ships are famous for aren't they let's be honest. Um, I could do this under sort of warm soapy water but this one isn't actually dirty like that there's a few little stains which I'm going to get off with some polish but that's about it. Um, I wouldn't say this one looked bad at all, to be honest. And all this is doing is just taking off any sort of dust that may have built up. And it's a really good way. It's a really good way of cleaning your figures as well, if you want to. Um, I would imagine this was assembled. There we are. So, so you see, sort of in that bit there, I'm going to need to get the old uh, cleaner in there. But I'll dust it out first. So if I was a kid and I had this one assembled, I'd never ever want to put it back in the box, to be honest, you know, because it's such a cool looking ship, isn't it, you know? So maybe this one, the original owner, back in the day, he had his um, on display as well. Quite possibly, and it's never been, uh, and it wasn't put away until he decided to, uh, to get shot of it. These little ridges along the top there. So those, to be honest, this is where it's actually the worst, is just in these, and that's because it's an easy spot to catch dust and dirt, isn't it? But, also, it's an easy fix if you've got, got a toothbrush, an old toothbrush lying around. And I use this to do uh, clean books as well. So I'm just going to use my soft cloth here and a bit of Mr. Sheen. And I'm going to take this first panel here and just give it a bit of a tart up, basically. Um, as I said, I'm not going to wash this one all the way through, but any sort of little bits and pieces on it, this should really uh, pick it up. Because um, it's not mint, but it is at least in its box, <laughs> which is to be commended. So there are a few little bits and pieces here which do need... Um, a little bit of extra elbow grease but that's cool um, and if you have a look just by doing this one bit of the panel the sort of the yellow sort of muck I've picked up off that now if you remember this bit here was really uh, sort of bad so I'm just going to pop a square of polish in there in the hut and just give it a minute or so then that should hopefully, once it's sort of soaked in, should hopefully be able to clean that, that little, little bit up. There we are, it's actually come up really nicely. There we are, that's lovely. So I think, just double check, but I think that side, you see it's just in a few places it's like yellowed up and that could be just the uh, sort of the age of the plastic more than anything but with a bit of careful um, careful marking I think that, that gets most of it up so that's that side pretty much done right so that's that side looking I think I would say reasonably good now I'm going to do the same to this side as well and rather than spray the actual pieces direct I'm just going to pop it onto this soft cloth and just try to take off a bit of the yellowing and aging which has happened to this plastic because I suppose ultimately it's just what's going to happen isn't it plastic ages 
and this plastic is well I guess you know it's 40 40 years old now almost not quite but almost 40 years old and uh, like any plastic from this era it's going to start to show signs of age now I don't know if you remember but I always remember when I got this one so when this came out in the UK I had actually stopped sort of buying Star Wars toys back then um, I have all my original stuff but I don't even really remember seeing it in the shop but or in shops but when I had my own shop back in the 90s some and we used to sell secondhand Star Wars someone came in with one and on the box which is what we'll look at in a minute the box was in a bit of a sorry old state but on it there we are that's fine it was quite funny because it had um the original price which was 50 pounds this is a Woolworths in Woolworths it was it was 50 pound for the original price and then that had been half that had been scrubbed out and it was 25 pounds so reduced from 50 to 25 and then reduced again to 12 pounds 50 and that is when uh, this this kid got it so um and he'd had it from from new basically and uh, i said oh mate i've been after one of these for a long long time and i forget exactly what i gave him but it you know this is the 90s we were talking about and although this was sort of a known collectible don't get me wrong it was one of those ones that was a bit of a holy grail for a lot of collectors because it was such an iconic piece um I didn't really give it much for it, probably, I mean, I honestly don't remember, but it probably wasn't much more than about 20, 30 quid at the time, you know, I mean, the, the young, young young kid was really happy, I was happy just to get it, and just seeing if this pops out, there we are. I was really happy to get it, and, uh, you know, that was it, that was what it was like back then, that was, that was the 90s, you know, I always remember the days of people coming into the store, and, uh, you got to remember that this was at the time when we first opened, especially it was a bit different when we shut, you know, eight to 10 years later. But at the time uh, when we first opened, we used to sell loose Star Wars figures across the board at 75p each. There was no price guides to think to speak of per se. Um, so that's how much Star Wars figures cost second hand back then and you could literally go to boot sales or what we would call jumble sales and um, pick them up by the bag load now once the youngsters found out that we were buying second hand star wars figures and they obviously a lot of the, these kids grew up with them and had bag loads and bag loads of them people would bring them into the shop and we'd buy buy a, a carrier bag full of star wars figures for like tenner something like that Got your weapons? Yeah, brilliant, you know. We'd often pick up ships or chew back a bandolier belts just full of weapons. I mean, just incredible. But it was at that sort of time, I'd already started collecting Star Wars for myself. So I just put together a, like a run of, you know, all the loose ones. And uh, then I started pulling the, the card ones together. And then you know, I already had some anyway. And back then you could still find them. They were around, they had toy shows. A lot of people just didn't even want to a lot of dealers didn't touch Star Wars because it was just everywhere, you know. So um, that was that was the time to be collecting it, and the time, if you were a dealer, to be uh, that was the time to be picking it up, you know, when it was cheap and cheerful, because those days didn't last very long, and uh, Star Wars became, you know, perhaps the hottest sort of property around which it is today, you know, it's got to be classed as the crown jewel of um, collectibles. Okay then, so I don't think there's much we need to do on this um, instruction booklet. It has actually survived in remarkably good shape considering uh, its age. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Once again, it's like this entire ship, it's sort of, it's just showing the, the minute signs of sort of aging and yellowing. But um, rather than it being really pristine white, but I suppose that's just to be expected more than anything. Let's just give this like little guns a bit of a clean, but I don't think there's much we can do with those. That's fine. Right. So now on to the main ship itself. Now this has got 
Upon closer inspection, this has got quite a bit of dust and dirt on it. Now, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to see, but along these sorts of grooves along here, you can sort of see where it's sort of dusty and spotty. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over the whole thing with my toothbrush, first of all, like this, and I'm going to try and dig out what this will do. It will just dislodge that, that dust and dirt. And then when I go through again, a second time round with my slightly damp furniture polish duster, that's going to pick up for the majority of the dust and dirt. At least that's the plan. And this has always worked before. And as you can see, well, at least I can see, it's already picking up loads of dust and dirt. And this one seriously hasn't been done. This has never been cleaned since I first picked it up. Um, I've just never got around to it. It's been sort of on the list of things to do. And you know how it is. You know, something else comes along and uh, you end up doing that instead, you know. But I thought, well, what better way? This has been on my list of things to do, I, I kid you not, since about January. So I thought, I better do it. It's such a great ship. And uh, I've certainly been enjoying um, doing these sort of little cleaning and restoration videos lately that I thought it might be a quite a nice fun one to do. Um, so it's not too bad dusty wise, it's just in those little little crevices. I probably, when I first got it, I probably gave it a basic clean. But it's mainly in these sort of, um, these sort of ridges here. And that's where the, uh, the dust and dirt seems to have accumulated. But that's okay. Looking at the back of it now, same thing again. This back bit doesn't seem too bad. Not as bad as the front. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to pick this up, but I can see loads and loads of little, little dust and dirt. It's just, it's just disappearing as I run the toothbrush over it, which is absolutely fantastic. That's just what I wanted to happen. This side doesn't seem so bad as the other side, so it's probably just the way it's been stored and or displayed that's caused, caused it to get a little bit dusty and dirty. Cool. Let's just have a look at the, uh, the bottom of the ship. So it's got a couple of uh, landing feet. like so. But the bottom of this looks actually really good. It's fine. Sure is a beast, isn't it? Right. Um, so I'm going to go over this now. I think that's all the little crevices cleaned out. I'm going to um, go over this now with my uh, duster and polish and try and uh, sort of take off a bit of the uh, the worst white, um, what uh, sort of the yellowing areas to get them a bit whiter. Um, and then um, we'll assemble it. We'll just admire just how good a blooming ship this was, and one it's certainly one of the greatest Star Wars toys ever. And um, then we'll make a start on the box. Certainly, uh, it makes an almost instantaneous difference. 
putting a bit of uh, polish on this one. It's taken up all the old sort of fingerprints. And as I said, this isn't doing anything to harm the original toy. I'm not adding anything to it. I'm merely just giving it a little bit of a clean because it's got all those years of uh, play on it, which is cool. Certainly the youngster who I bought it off, I forget how old he was now, he's like a teenager or something. I bought his figures as well, he had a couple of other play sets. And uh, I seem to remember, he swapped it for some Ghostbusters stuff, which I guess was a bit more what he was into. Which is cool, isn't it? To say it is mainly the wing areas that um, that required the work rather than anywhere else. Um, it's just so big. Trying to work on it is a nightmare. Well, it's it would be if. A bit easier if I wasn't trying to film everything as well. <laughs> but I don't mind. I guess you guys find this interesting and uh, it's all part of being a collector, isn't it? You've got to, got to maintain your collection. It's, you know, it is as simple as that sometimes, isn't it? Um, it's pointless having all this stuff if you don't uh, look after it. And, you know, I am looking to uh, put quite a few bits out on display quite soon in some purpose-built areas in my uh, house where I'm going to put some of my very best stuff, some of the stuff I've had um, boxed up in GW acrylic cases and that. And one of the bits I think I might just get out is this, it's simply because if I can get the box looking good enough, it's just going to be such a worthwhile piece to put out. And it's so displayable. I mean, it really, really is. It's such a displayable piece that I think it's going to really benefit from being out on display. It's so eye-catching. That along with the uh, the Death Star, the British Palatoy Death Star. Probably my two all-time favorite pieces. There we are. Wow. So that's pretty much cleaned and it is already looking much, much better. There's only a couple of little, like, little yellow sort of hot spots where uh, it hasn't quite come up. So I'm just gonna put it together and uh, we'll have one last look at it in, uh, in its complete and clean form. The iconic vintage place set. I mean, it really is fantastic in every way, isn't it? Just superb. I've had to pull all the way out just to get it in. Um, but it really is fantastic. If I sort of angle it around a little bit here. I mean, imagine having that one if you were a youngster, right? I mean, it would just be uh, fantastic, wouldn't it? to have had one of them in your collection. Just incredible, absolutely incredible. I always remember seeing, I mean, you see them all the time now, but I always remember seeing dioramas with uh, one of these in and then, you know, hundreds of stormtroopers and the Emperor and Darth Vader, you know, sort of walking down in recreation of that scene from Return of the Jedi. Absolutely amazing. If we, uh, Load up the side wings here, like so, so that's as if it was uh, flying. It truly is a great, great, great ship, isn't it? I mean, there's no two ways around it. Got to be one of the most iconic ones ever. Just superb. Anyway. That is that, and the instructions, as I said, they were all fine as well, so we don't need to worry about those. So the next thing we definitely do need to have a look at is the box. Now, the box is in a bit of a sorry old state, uh, but I don't think it's going to require too much work. Um, it's mainly just uh, just cleaning the uh, the muck off, getting rid of the sellotape, and then reapplying some new tape inside just to strengthen it up a bit. But there we are. Let's uh, Let's crack on with the box now. 
Right then, so here is that top flap. Now, I don't know how much you can see on video, but I'm hoping that you can sort of pick up the areas around here where it's sort of spotty and dirty. And I've just got my trusty old cleaning toothbrush here. And I'm just gonna do along this little edge here. Hopefully you can see that initially already it is actually making, it's already made quite a difference there. So I'm just going to carry on and do the entire box lid. Wow, so that's the top flaps dusted off. They're not, as, not quite as dirty as they were beforehand. Um, I am, however, still going to need to give them a bit of a wipe um, because just to give it that last little sort of once over. And they were certainly in a sorry old state. That actually looks a little bit better than, than where we were to begin. So let's pull the camera out a bit. So I'm just going to give this side a bit of a, a clean. So I'm using this duster which has got a little bit of polish already on it. I'm going to pop a little bit more on now. So it's already a little bit damp. Because this side bit here is like a laminated bit, well not laminated but it's like glossy, um, you can get away with putting a bit of uh, polish on the side just to bring it up. Which is exactly what that's done. So that's improved it remarkably, <laughs> in my opinion. And we'll do the same on this one. Now, that little bit there could actually use um, sticking down. So I'm just gonna get my Pritt stick. So I've got my little bit of Pritt stick here. I'm just gonna pop a little bit just in that bit there so that that bit where it's ripped. Shouldn't get any worse. Now the rest of this, just gonna give it the old once over because it's nice and glossy. This is the side which had the original price sticker on can just sort of see a little remnant of the uh, Woolworth stickers. And even though that may not have made that much of a difference, look at that, look at the muck that's come off it. Incredible, eh? So anyway, that's lovely. And the, these cardboard sides, obviously you can't do anything about those because they are as they are. Now, the next thing was this tape, so you can see it's like hanging off and this is why the box is it's no good it's lost all its like security so I'm wondering look, without even doing anything the tape has pretty much come off the bottom now this side is just being a bit more careful here As you can see, this is 40 year old tape. And it's just 
coming to dust in my hands. But I'm doing it ever so slowly so as not to tear any of the uh, picture. There we are. Look at it. Knackered old tape. And what I'll do, just to tidy up the bit that side, I'm going to put some more polish on my uh, rag here. There will be a mark left, but at least it's got rid of, that looks better than what was there. So if you look at the top now, you can see that this is the fold which needs to be sorted out. But what I'm going to do, rather than tape it on the outside, I'm going to use some of my uh, sort of archival brown tape and I'm going to do it on the inside of the box so I shall tape it inside rather than outside and that way it should uh, protect things a little bit better and um, it won't become too unsightly. The other bit of tape I'm going to be doing I think I shall tape those two flaps together and then also this corner here I think I'll do as well if I can. So that's the bit of taping I'm going to do next. So that should be the final part then, and then we'll put it all back together. Okay, so this was the top box flap here that's going to need um, putting back together. Now I've got a roll of this uh, sort of gummed paper. So you cut it out to size, then you get this side wet and sort of stick it in position. So um, I'm going to just measure how much I need. So I'll cut off, cut off a strip first of all of approximately the right length. Down to about there I think is going to be fine. Let's just have another look. Now I'm not sure how well this is going to go because it's quite a thick piece of cardboard but I think that's about as good as we're going to be able to get it. So I just wet this uh, gummed, gummed tape. And all we're really trying to do is just stop it getting any worse. It's not like an archival repair or anything like that, but it's just a stopping it getting any worse sort of a repair. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to take this insert out from inside because this is absolutely fine, but it's going to make sorting the bottom bit out a bit easier, shall we say. So I pop that to one side. So there's that bit. So let's see. There we are. At least it's all in one piece now. Like the other side. So it's in one bit. And the, the other side is the same. So that's good news. So that's that. Now, the other bit I wanted to have a little play with before we do the bottom is this bit here. So this presents a bit more of a, of a problem because it's so difficult to access. Um, it's this bit here. So ideally I want to get a bit of tape like that on the inside. To keep it in situ. So it's a bit tricky bit of a tricky one this, but you can bend this, you see, I could bend that into a corner and pop it in like that. But I feel to keep it in position, it might need two bits of tape. One bit sort of along there like an L, just along the top, then another one folded over to go in that crack. 
So that is what I'm going to aim to do. I'm actually going to do this with two bits of tape rather than the one. So once again, it's a bit of a fiddly thing to try and film. Even harder thing to try and, <laughs> to try and actually do. So uh, let me just uh, pause there and get myself ready. Right then, so I hope you can see the uh, area quite clearly now. So that's the tear I'm looking to do. And it is worse than it looks, unfortunately. So it is going to require two bits of tape. I think to do it properly. Um, so I'm going to do two bits of tape, approximately the same sort of size. And the first one I'm going to do across that sort of joint there, first of all. I'm just putting it in cross, I'm just folding it. And I'm just gonna look to do it along, right along the edge like that. So that'll be the first bit. So it's gonna be a two-handed affair, this one. A two-stage affair, rather. So let me get this wet. And then we'll pop this bit in place. I'm just sort of activating the gum that way. Because the cardboard is so thick, just doing it with this tape is not ideal. But I don't want to obviously cover it in sellotape, you know, because that would be awful. And uh, this stuff is really easy in the future. If you wanted to get rid of it and get this professionally restored, you could do it, you know, it's like archive safe. It's not going to cause any sort of real long-term damage or anything. But because this is such a, a key joint, I've done it once that way. And I'm taking another bit of tape and fold it in half again. And I'm going to put this one down that way. This is going to give it that extra bit of... Uh, security. So once again I just uh, use my cloth to activate the gum like so. Just want to put my thumb into the, uh, the groove there. And it's pretty pliable tape this. So you can get it roughly in position and then sort of really push it in. Now that, that bit there, unfortunately, is a little bit which isn't stuck down very well. So I'm just going to put a little bit more gum on that one. And hopefully that will now stick in place. Right, so, yes, that's not too bad. All things considered, that's not too bad. Um, and it's sorted out that sort of, that top flap area. So now the bottom. Okay, so I'm not sure how, <laughs> if this is gonna be that easy to see, but what I'm intending to do is put one piece of tape across there to have it in like that. Then another bit of tape to the lengthways, and I'm going to do it inside rather than outside, in the hope that that will be enough to keep the bottom in place. Um, and fingers crossed, with the rest of the repairs that we've done, it's going to be a little bit more rigid anyway. So that's my hope. So I'm just getting the first bit of tape organized here. And this one's simply going to go right the way along. Like so. And I need a much longer bit of tape 
to go lengthways across the actual join. It's a tiny bit long. So that's the plan, that's how it's supposed to be going on. And I think by doing it this way, it saves any sort of mess on the outside of that lovely box. We definitely don't want that. And in the future, if someone wanted to get rid of this, well, they could basically. So there we are, that is it back. And hopefully, and um, this gum tape takes a little bit of time to set off, but hopefully I should now be able to put everything back in and it will look really, really good and also much more secure. So now we come to probably the hardest bit of the entire job and that's actually putting it back into its box. Now, it's not something I've been looking forward to doing because I know it's an absolute swine and we've just spent all that time trying to get the box looking as good as as good as possible. So I know we need to get the uh, the fin off and I think the actual extra bits and pieces we'll do at the end. Um, the actual ship itself then is what we need to sort of concentrate on getting put in and I don't think there's any way to take any more bits off it. a bit of jiggery pokery but it seems to be that seems to be the way it should go in I'm hoping <laughs> um, and about the additional bit here if that's supposed to go in a particular way or not I'm sure if anyone's got one of these they can see I'm probably massacring this part Should be able to pick it up now without all four of the bits. There we are. So it's probably a little bit difficult to discern from over film, but dramatically the uh, the shuttle is a much much better condition than when I first started uh, playing around with it. It certainly feels much more robust now. It doesn't feel like it's going to sort of fall to bits on me. We know underneath it's all been cleaned to a high standard now and it's uh, it's as, and it is all complete as well, which is really good news. Um, so there we are. I mean, an absolutely iconic ship and certainly um, one of the, the great ships in the entire vintage range, wasn't it? I mean, Without a shadow of a doubt, it's certainly up there with, with the Death Star, for certain. Brilliant. So I hope you have enjoyed looking through the Imperial Shuttle. And uh, I think you'll agree, it does, uh, does look a lot better than when we started. If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing for regular vintage Star Wars content. There's lots on my channel. I've got loads more still to sort of uh, unpack and clean um, and share with you on the channel. And there's still stuff I haven't shared at all yet. Uh, loads of signed stuff as well, which uh, will be quite interesting to look at. So I've got all of that coming up in the future. Um, thanks for watching again today, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.